Bewaker. Bindmiddel. At the speech recognition lab of the TU Delft, Odette Scharenburg works to improve automated speech recognition. Can computers get as good at recognizing speech as humans? This is how speech recognition learns from humans. So what is needed to build a speech recognition system is first of all lots of data. And of that data we need to know what has been said. So we need speech data and what has been said, so that's text. Then we use that speech data and the text to train acoustic models. And these acoustic models are general representations of the speech sound in the language. Then we need a lexicon, which is a list of all the words the recognizer can actually recognize. And lastly, we need a language model. The language model says what's the probability of certain sequences of words occurring in that particular language. Play one by you two on Spotify. Sorry, something went wrong. Please try opening the Spotify app to continue. So the problems with uh, automatic speech recognition systems nowadays is that they are being trained and created for people who have normal voices and only for about 2% of the languages in the world. So an automatic speech recognition system is a system that automatically transforms the speech signal into a written transcript. But the types of experiments that we run is actually twofold. On the one hand, we look at what humans are doing when they're listening to speech, because humans are very fast at learning new languages, which computers cannot that fast, and because they're very good at adapting to non-standard speech. So we're looking at, so what do humans do? And can we use that to improve our automatic speech recognition systems? Um, and we, these uh, automatic speech recognition systems are based on deep learning. Clipper. Knuppel. So during the experiment, the participant is listening to sound files and some of them contain a, contain a word and some of them contain non-words and they have to say this is a word or not. Now, the manipulation is that some of these words actually contain sounds that are ambiguous between L and R. And they still have to listen to, um, to these sounds and say whether it's a word or not. In a second task, they're listening to ambiguous sounds on the continuum from L to R, and they have to indicate whether they're hearing an L or an R. So what we measure is in the first task, we measure whether someone says this is a word or not. And we only look at the answers for which they say this is a word and it was actually a word. In the second task, we look at how often they said this is an L or how often this is an R. The way we use the knowledge about how humans process speech into our uh, deep neural network based automatic speech recognizers is that we look at the flexibility with which humans can actually learn new languages and can adapt to deviant speech, so non-normal speech, and what it does to the actual sound representations in our human brains. And we look at how deep neural networks do this and whether we can implement the same type of flexibility as humans are showing. Play one by YouTube on Spotify. Oh, this time it is correct. Yeah, it's correct. <laughs> <laughs>